This morning is the Gospel of Thomas. And I just need to share with you that I find this an extremely difficult sermon to deliver. And I do so because I know this. There is a whole lot of Thomas in most of us. We have doubts. We have fears. We have anxieties. And I need to tell you that that's normal and it's healthy. It's part of our lives. But when we get stuck behind those doubts and those fears and those anxieties and we miss the opportunity to move forward, that's when things get very unhealthy. Thomas was completely and totally justified in being royally ticked off with Jesus in his own mind. In his mind, Jesus had betrayed him. Jesus had abandoned him. Jesus had walked out when he needed him the most. Where was God when I needed him the most? Screamed Thomas. Older commentaries say that Thomas might have slipped out for some groceries with the group, for the group. That's why he wasn't in the group. Let me tell you the truth. He told him exactly what he thought he left. He was angry. He was frustrated. He felt betrayed. With his limited knowledge of the situation, he honestly thought that Jesus had walked out on him when he needed him the most. If our word was so powerful, how would Jesus choose not to be there when he needed him? Let me tell you how common this experience is. Most of you have had this feeling at a funeral. Most of you have had this feeling at the bedside of a dying loved one. Most of you have had this feeling when a member of your family was critically ill and you didn't understand why God would allow it to happen. There is more Thomas in most of us than we care to admit. And I just need to authenticate your feelings today. That those feelings are real, they're authentic, they have integrity, but they have limited knowledge. For we never really know when God is doing something extraordinary we cannot see. We are not only called to follow Jesus' example, but also to share the good news that God is in the midst of all things, no matter how painful they may be. Some of you are feeling cheated, abandoned, angry, and frustrated. And it may be a member of the family, it might be your workplace, it could be a loved one, and it might even be your church. And you're absolutely sure that whatever has recently been done in the family, at work, or at the church was done deliberately to make you angry. It was done on purpose. We're absolutely sure when something goes wrong that God or somebody else has set out to hurt us. And Thomas felt that way. And again, I want to authenticate what you are saying. I'm not questioning how you feel. I just think it's important to have all the information. Sometimes we lack information. Somebody comes home late and we say, where have you been? What were you doing? Sometimes somebody gets sick and we assume that God is deliberately and intentionally taking them away from us. When the reality is that there is a bigger plan beyond our imagination. Whether you are dating or you are married or you are a widow, every single one of you in this room understands what it means to feel betrayed, whether it happened or not. Anyone who has children or grandchildren understands what it is to be disappointed by the behavior of the other, but that doesn't mean it was done to hurt you directly. And anyone that's seen a large screen television sitting in the secretary's office would make the assumption that the motives were less than pure when in truth they were holy and sacred. Because it's how we're built. I want to encourage you today to shift the thinking. 
And to ask yourself this question in every situation, how might God be blessing me long term in this moment? What might be good that comes out of this? What extraordinary event may occur in my life? That God has a bigger plan than I do. I want to return to the gospel and look at this. And, and Jesus said to the disciples, peace be with you. Now I need you to understand, this is not like somebody walking into the, into the room and, and looking at you and saying, hey, how are you? How's it going? Jesus says, peace be with you. And although it's a familiar term, the way it's said and the number of times it's said and the process with which it is said is critically important. You see, what's really happening here is this. Jesus understands they're not at peace. They're frustrated, they're irritated, they're upset. They have some recent history of being deeply wounded. And so he says to you, God's been with you the whole time, and he's so caring and compassionate for you, he sent me back to show up in front of you. Jesus did not have to make appearances to hundreds of people that he did but he did it so that they could see and believe. What would happen in this church if we believed and then we could see? If we believed in God's power, if we believed in God's transformational message, if we believed in God's healing power, if we believed that he loved us before we were born and brought Jesus Christ to change our lives, what would happen if we believed and then we could see? That was the question that Jesus gave to Thomas. Now, I want you to understand as you're looking at Scripture today that Jesus did not ridicule Thomas. He did not criticize him. He left that to us. Oh, it's so easy to point at somebody else and forget the number of fingers pointing back. Instead, he said to Thomas, you need evidence? Touch my hands, touch my feet, put your hand in my side. If you need proof, I'll give you proof. Proof that you can trust me. This coming week, I want to leave with you a huge challenge this morning. I want you to go home and really think about how many times God has shown you in your life that you can trust him. How many times has God showed you that you can trust him over and over and over again. And yet, someone would say that it's a little bit like being married from the male perspective. It takes a lot of time to gain up the points of favor, and you can lose the whole shooting match in 10 seconds. <laughs> Wait a minute, except in my house? It's not true. It's not true in our marriages and it's not true with Jesus Christ. We don't gain points and lose them in a second. The reality is this is not a game and it's not about points. It's about love and trust and respect. And we are invited not only to emulate Jesus, but to take that message of love and forgiveness and trust into the lives of other people. Do our children and our grandchildren know? Do our spouses and our friends and our family know every day that we are a part of Jesus' mission? Or do we slip up, lose hope, and have doubts? It's normal to have the doubts, but it's essential to take that next step that Thomas took in the Gospel, where when he was offered proof, evidence, he turned to Jesus and reclaimed his faith and his life and said, my Lord and my God. We need to be able to get up every morning and look in the mirror. And as we close our eyes and look at our own reflection, we need to be able to affirm that faith. My Lord and my God, I know that I can trust you, that you've proven yourself over and over and over again. And although I've been hurt, although I'm angry, although I'm frustrated, although I'm irritated, I know that if I leave it with you, I leave it with you, you will bring healing and hope and a new beginning to this moment.
moment. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.